Gregor with 27 goals on the season. Malusi with 14. Okay, here we go. University School and the Zach Kokendorfer. Kokendorfer has a man within. Kokendorfer gets a clean shot and Holston sticks that to the corner. Play continues as Hudson keeps the pressure on. Harry Ross with a shot that's wide and now played by number one seeded Raiders, the number four seeded Wildcats. Now well, here's Reese Richardson for Hudson. They're swinging around to Max Giblin, their great defenseman. Oh, tip the tip there by Gannon Glazer just misses. Carter Mears, the top line right wing for Davis Duriski's Hudson Raiders. Raiders hold the zone there. And they throw it back behind for Kokendorfer. Now it's Maurer, Matt Maurer, 14 in the corner. He'll drop it for Kokendorfer. Double team there. Maurer gets it back, looking for Kokendorfer again, but he's hounded by Michael Kennedy, the captain for the University School of Milwaukee Wildcats. Centering pass, was looking for Matt Maurer, but he was on the ice and couldn't do anything with it. Gets the puck, gains the zone. Man on him, still gets a shot off. Poston knocks it off the top of the back of the glass behind the net. And play continues. Hotrats was with a contested shot, but still made Poston make the play. Now Potrats again. He's looking for Harry Ross, but that's intercepted. Now Potrats again in front of the net. And the Raiders putting on big pressure here. Strapping with it. Potrats one more time. Didn't get a stick on the shot. He's bothered by a Wildcat player. And I'll battle for the puck along the near boards in the corner. Potrats has been all over the place early. Number 10. Tried to center, but couldn't get connections. Now Ross with it. This is Harry Ross for Hudson. Takes a big hit from Sam Anderson for the Wildcats. He's strapped for the puck. Finally pops out to Brody Dietz at the uh, left point. Now Reese Richardson in the corner battles for Hudson. Richardson comes away with it, looking for some help. Richardson will turn and shoot. Holston held his ground and made the stop. A tip attempt. Braden Hess had to get it past Poston, but couldn't get it on goal. And now, Brookfield's foot in the year. finals after getting by Arrowhead in three overtimes in the semis. They played two overtimes in the second final, so they know how to win the close game. Yeah, one of the assistant coaches, two years of this tournament. Ethan Gurney races in and folks it back to his. Teammate Augie Wolf. Now Hudson recovers and traffic in front. This is Giblin spinning. That will hit traffic. Giblin had a chance there a couple of times. Denied by Poston in the Wildcat defense. Now coming right with it is Hudson. That's Braden Hess with a shot. That's knocked out of play. He's been basically, a, I don't want to say a hockey backer because that isn't fair, but it's put together by a, a mother with a had to wear with all the do so, and she was interested in her kid playing hockey. There's a shot attempt by Carter Mears after Matt Maurer did the dirty work to set it up. Now there's five bodies in front of Poston in goal, and somehow that puck got through, and Poston was able to see it and grab it and set up a three year starter. We'll get to his numbers in a second. Giblin let one fly from the blue line. That is just wide. Now here comes Maurer again. Here's a great feed to Mears. He went high and went over the net. Kept in low. Beats. Shot blocked by traffic in front. They were looking for Maurer, but it's intercepted for the moment. As Carter Mears gets it back for Hudson. Up, poked away there by Ben Malusi. Here's Harry Ross carries it in for Hudson. Now here's Potritz. He'll throw it behind, looking for Strappen a little too far for him. Now Strappen recovers along the far boards. But there to play this William Guy for the Wildcats. This team played once during the regular season. Hudson scored a 6-1 victory. Race for the putt. Larry Ross is there for Hudson along with Carson Strappen. And here comes Marcus Thundercloud playing it for... The Wildcats, and it hops right back on his stick. But here comes heavy pressure from the Raiders. 
And now back we go with Jack Tarnas. Again, Hudson. Now oh, here comes Hudson. And then Blazer tried to center. Great and has got tied up in front of the net, went into the goal. That's some good news for Hudson. They've converted about one out of every three chances, 32.3% on the air. This is Brody Dietz. Matt Mauer's out there, number 14. Giblin will try a long slap shot from the blue line, handled by the glove of Michael Poston. Penalty killing has been a strength for the Wildcats. They've killed off 89.6% of their opponent's chances. You know Poston's going to be busy here. He's already got nine saves in the early going. Face off one by the Raiders. Here's Maurer centering. Ooh, and there was a open door for pass. Didn't quite get through. Otherwise, that could have been a beautiful play. And here's a shot from Mears. It's stopped by Polston, sent to the corner, and cleared by the University School of Milwaukee. Mears, right a long cross-ice pass. Looking for Brody Dietz, but didn't start the play. Now uh, here's Potrex and tried to center. He had a couple of guys there. Ross and Scrappin. Uh, Scrappin. That's it to Potrex. Potrex now with a chance. Lifts a backhander over the top of the goal. Now Cats break up that opportunity and send it back. Try to get something going. Well, a big hit there. Again, the boards rattle here like no other. Well, here comes Reese Richardson for Hudson. Made a lot of headway, but then finally stopped just in front of the net. Deets spins, feeding. Shot there by Mauer's block. Wildcats come away with it with Nunag. Now here comes Hudson. This is Mauer shooting and Poston stopping. Post is a nice event, but again, it gives more of a turn of the field for these kids to, to come to town. And both the Division Two and Division One teams are represented at dinner next door at the uh, exhibition hall. Carter Mears tried to sneak one into the University School of Milwaukee. Face off goes right in. The 100-year anniversary. We're going to have it the year before, but COVID canceled both plans. Lots of action in front of Post and again. Finally, the Wildcats able to relieve the pressure for a little bit. Now Marcus Thundercloud spins it over to Michael Kennedy and on the stick of Jack Tarnas. Kennedy can't get it out. Here's Giblin. And for Maurer. And he tried to one-hand one in. Couldn't quite accomplish it. Hudson continues to put the offensive pressure on. Well, shots on goal tell you it all. He's a one-handed effort by Mears and Colson easy as out. His son Lane won a Hobie Baker award at Harvard. He was a useful one. Another shot, and they get a little dead in their tracks. We'll see if it affects a great goalie like Tepper Eggman at all. Long shot. Oh, boy, there's a tip attempt. That was Carson Strappen. He nearly got a tip-in goal off that missile from the blue line. Stolen away by Potritz. Potritz, he'll shoot. That hit a stick of landed. That's a credit to the goaltender. Olsen's been good. Thundercloud for the Wildcats. Two fifteen remaining in the scoreless first two. Christian Ford tries to dig it out of the Flipped in where Poston plays it again. A couple of Raiders are there, so he has to glove it and hang on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Two or three. Yeah. Shots now 15 nothing in favor of Hudson. Approach the final stages of period number one. Breck and Meyer throwing it in for the Raiders, but now Torn had one more good rush in before the period ends. Giblin tried to carry it in, but got bumped off the puck. Now here's Hudson with a steal and a chance. Oh, a great block there. That was Marcus Thundercloud, the defenseman, had to Matt Mauer. Now here comes Hudson with a chance. Oh, that was a good opportunity for Mears. Still loose, and now Poston covers up again. Some pushing and shoving. That's Matt. We're going to get penalties out of that pushing man. Here's what happened. Why did it act like her? 
going to be penalties. Yeah, the I referees it didn't. But sure like you know, your thoughts? So here's the mini scrum afterwards. No penalties assessed. Might have been, but no dice. Off the face off, post in. Lost the kid just There's the horn. Hit Giblin, but the pass is behind him. And now Deep Okendorfer gains the zone, but now he's double teamed by the Wildcats. Bauer in the corner. Wildcats had it for a second, but then Dietz recovers for Hudson. Howard tries to chase it down, but the Wildcats get there first. Now Strappen leading that second line for Hudson. He's battling for the puck. And then retreating Michael Kennedy for the Wildcats. Just underway, second period. You see the shots, 16 to 1 in favor of Hudson. Is Max Giblin forcing the issue? Oh, he looked to pass it off the stick of Reese Richardson. Now Richardson controls again. He'll get it out to Dietz at the blue line. Then he'll swing it over to Giblin. Giblin has a wrister that goes in front of the net. I think that was blocked by Harry Ross. Or no, check that Braden Hess for Hudson. Got in the way of that one from Giblin. And the USM Cats try to... Inducted in the NFHS Hall of Fame last summer. She's in the U.S. Hockey Hall of Fame. She went in with our friend Jeff Sauer and former Badger Brian Rafalski a few years back. And, and Brody's father, Cal Dietz, I don't know if Cal's here or if he's back in the Twin Cities. He's a strength coach for both the men's and women's hockey teams at the University of Minnesota. How about that? So... Brody Deeds got a chance to be a pretty good hockey player. Again, he just a summer. He skates well. Oh, one time shot. They score. Carter. Michael Kennedy retreats for the Wildcats. He's in a battle with Hess for the puck for Hudson. Power took a hit for Hudson. Raiders pressing the issue again. Now Reese Richardson, the center of this third line, shoots one wide. It'll spin all the way up to the blue line. And Parent and Reckon Meyer are now the defensive pair out there for the Raiders. Oh, backhanded shot once, twice. Maurer couldn't get it by Poston. It's knocked behind the goal line. Kept in the zone by Parent. And scored the goal. Chips it in for the Raiders. Off the dasher now. Wildcats have to get it out of trouble right in front of their net. They finally do. But again, Hudson making life very difficult for the Wildcats. Worked out pretty well for them. Already five minutes into the second period. one nothing Raiders. And Lucy. Laid it behind the net. There's McGregor on the far boards working. Hudson intercepts. Now the Wildcats take control, but Hudson gets it right back. Bokendorfer with some nice stick work. And now here comes Carson Strappen. Can't get anything going on the play, and McGregor heads the other way for USM. Uh, Hudson knows you school pretty well. Man. Oh, chance for Alex Potrat. Stopped by Poston once. Rebound comes out to Dietz. Dietz throws it in, and heavy traffic, but Poston able to stop it. Both the uh, Hudson couldn't convert. Here's the flurry again. There's the first save. They keep whacking at it, and we'll get another shot here, and yet another one. So, Holston, <laughs> again, coming up big. And I think they shortchanged him on the number yeah, right? of shots in that flurry. But Holston giving his team a chance. Hudson will go on the power play. There's Dietz and Giblin at the blue line. That's a pretty good place to start. Here's Giblin. Swing it over for Mears. Giblin will let one fly. And a couple of Hudson players in front trying to tip. Polston has kept it out so far, and he will, but not out. Dietz. Giblin. Score! Boy, there are all... So both wingers on the first line for Hudson have the goals, and the Raiders are in charge. Now, the psyche of USM certainly 
had to have changed. They were after one period. They're like, hey, I know a lot has happened, but we're, we're still tied scoreless. But now they're suddenly down 2-0, and the shots keep on coming for the Raiders. Just Giblin with a fancy move. That one nearly snuck in and rebounded off a player in front. Giblin gets it back. He'll push it forward looking for Alex Potrets. Harry Ross now joins the play for the Raiders. Hudson just keeps pushing forward, pushing forward. Looking to get it out to Dietz at the blue line. He'll let one fly. That was Strappin looking for the tip in front. But the only way you still gets the puck in the offensive zone. Another chance for Mears. He had a little too much steam and was bothered by a Wildcat. So the play wasn't quite successful, but another Mike Maurer. That was the best offensive shift of the game for useful. And they nearly need a goal. Yes. 6.50 left. Second period. First and two boys division one semifinals here at the Lion Energy Center in Madison. Oh, look at that move by Giblin. Now he got it right back. Got a shot off right in front of the goalie Poston. And again, the Wildcat netminder has to come up big. Well, Grimlin made a little jumping move and then got the puck back and had a great opportunity. Yeah, he's very impressive. And he takes the pass, the return pass, and gets off a point blank drive. And Gibbon, or excuse me, Polston, who's now got 25 saves. Wow. <laughs> and we've got. 23 and a half minutes to play. Yeah. Matt Bauer was right there. On the they were pretty fired up. I'll bet they will again tomorrow at 9.30. Yeah. Well, that Big Rivers Conference, man. <laughs> Those are the big boys of hockey. Yeah. Hudson plays in that conference. Claire Schools had big years. Rice Lake, of course. Girls final tomorrow. Well, the semifinals on Alaska surprised Top seed at Xavier, 3-1 yesterday. Central Wisconsin Storm, a 4-1 winner. So, Alaska and Central Wisconsin Storm will go at it. Round 12, well, just a little afternoon tomorrow here at the Alliant Energy Center. Being available statewide on Quincy Media. They've got to find a way to get some chances. Let's see what this rush does. Alex Patras. He has Carson Strappin with him, and Patras shoots and scores. The goal was scored by number 10, Alex Patras. The assistants go to... Hudson's not going to take the foot off the accelerator, you got to figure. And they come right back, and Boston forced to make another stop. Here. Stay pretty fresh. Giblin. Rebound loose, and finally pushed to the corner. Another chance for Hudson. Another funny bounce off the glass. Centering pass just behind Gannon Blazer. So the fourth line now out there for Hudson. That one skipped in with Braden Hess is joining a couple of those fourth line forwards. Now Blazer centering. It's Mears. He's out there now. He's one of the goal scorers. And another opportunity there. Long shot. Oh, it appears Hudson's punching their ticket to the final, although we have a ways to go. But as you see with the shots on goal, U School just hadn't been able to, to do anything at all offensively. Yep. The evidence is there. There's Maurer. Parent from the blue line. That hit a wildcat and then controlled by Montes. I bet three different people now mention that to me <laughs> as their favorite state tournament memory. Yeah, so, so Coach Sauer gets hit by a puck up. You know, we're up above the, the goal. Above. And he did not miss a play, did he? Well, or, well a he missed plays. a couple minutes. He didn't miss a game. But why he even did the second game <laughs> as his eye was swollen <laughs> shut before my eyes. Mike. But, yeah, for those of us who are here, it is amazing that we all remember that as... A rebound the Petrus. And now the, the goal comes goal up. Get up. The 19. Redirect there. Polston with the save. And then Thundercloud or 
excuse me, yet Thundercloud defense partner. Uh, I think it was a <laughs> chain. I think it might have been a chain reaction here. Yeah, boom, boom. And Strappin was the guy who hit Thundercloud, but Marcus is up, thankful. Hudson's lead is 3 0 with now under three minutes left in the period. S up front. Parent. Cross ice pass intended for Meyer. Never. <laughs> yeah, I'll bet he really appreciated yeah, it. That. was a thought that counts. <laughs> oh, wraparound attempt there. Beauty by Brody Dietz. Great play. Didn't quite finish it, but what an effort. Now Giblet. Back out to Mears. You know, let one fly. That's deflected now. Hour tries one. Poston trying to lock it up, but can't. So the play continues. Mears or Mauer battling for Hudson. Now here's Strappen. And the barrage continues on Poston. So, you know, a little give and go, but nothing was doing for Hudson there. But yeah, the Raiders just keep keep forcing the issue. U school, third power play for Hudson. They're one for two so far in the afternoon. This is Meyer. Meyer gets it back. In a two-man game right now between Meyer and Hess. Now Ross with it. Long shot, post in. That's going to land on top of the net and stay up there. So the play will stop because of it. Minute and a half left on the power play. Hudson trying to add to a 3 0 advantage. Now down to 40 seconds left in the period, so that power play will spill into the third period unless the Raiders convert. Great cross ice pass, tough shot. Poston held his ground. Of Brody Dietz, who came up to the first oh, Got the pass through the box here. Mm -hmm. Over the wire, didn't think I was so, so good. But <laughs> Dietz had pinched and gets off a point blank drive. Now 30 seconds left in the period. Here's Giblin. Well, I'll take Giblin and Dietz at the blue line any time, huh? Now here's a chance for Maurer. He tried to go between his legs, and the rebound finally. Wolf Corbin McGuire gave him one of the all-time great speeches here because I don't know what in the world you could say because Hudson's been so dominant in every phase. Well, first you got to kill off this belt. Right. Yep, baby steps. Quick shot. Goes off the stick of Giblin that goes wide, but Hudson gains his own. Giblin gets it right back. Giblin lets it fly. It's Matt Maurer parked in front of the net, but... In. Strappen sends it down. Harry Ross gives a chase. Ross blocked the pass attempt. Didn't realize the puck was right in front of him, and that gave the Wildcats a chance to recover. And now Ross gets it again. Relentless work by Harry Ross for Hudson. Shot from the point. Potrats tried to tip it, but couldn't get it. Now Potrats in the corner. As Hudson continues to work hard and move that puck. And the moves by Ross. He's going to drop it back for Strappen, but Strappen went the other way. Now Strappen does gain control. Circling around, rebound in front is Potras, but Boston kept that out of the way and gets it out of the Big Rivers Conference. Here comes Carter Mears. Shot blocked initially by Thundercloud. Mears got it back and got another attempt off. Now here's a point blank shot, and they score! Man for the Hudson Raiders. Mauer, Matthew Mauer gets an assist, and that will be the only assist on the Max Giblin goal. Champions of the Big Rivers, as we said. Uh, sixth trip to state in the last seven years for Hudson. And they appear to be well on the way to returning to the state title game. So Carter Mears and Matthew Maurer, Alex Pautretz, and Max Giblin are the goal scorers for Hudson so far. And the Raiders still with a lot of spring in their step. Here's Jack. 
No icing will be called. In fact, it doesn't get to the goal line. And denied there by Marcus Thundercloud, the defenseman for the Wildcats. Now here's Maurer. Maurer tried to feed it to Kockendorfer. Kuckendorfer, excuse me. Had a shot there. Kokendorfer gets it back. Boy, look at the Raiders passing that puck. Maurer back out for Dietz. Kokendorfer was trying to get a tip. Centering pass to Mears goes through everybody. And now the Wildcats. Giblin, look at the move. Giblin with a shot off the outside of the goal. Now Potratz steals it. Thundercloud plays it for the Wildcats. And goes to the body to take on Maurer for the moment. Back it comes to the blue line. That's Parent. And the shot is stopped by Posta. We've got some coming up, too. We've got eight seniors. Oh, and another score! This time. Here they come again. And another great move there. That's Blazer. And some pushing and shoving. With South is a roughing call. I think it was a good call. Yeah. So here we go, another Hudson power play. This is Drucken Meyer. For Alex Potras. He's scoring one of the five Hudson goals, Potras. One time shot there by Strappen. Potras battles for the rebound. Back to Strappen. He'll try it again. That one hit a defenseman in front. Another shot from Hudson. That one came from Brecken Meyer off the glass behind the goal. Tip attempt there by Potras, and Poston held his ground and made it a lot of state championships. He's as impressed as anybody at the, the depth and the way Hudson played. There's Giblin again working the power play. Over to his defensive buddy Dietz. There's Matt Maurer getting the puck back off the stick of Michael Kennedy for. That's going to reflect that, but they were taking a penalty. There's Mike Maurer. He took a big hit. That was from Christian Ford of the Wildcats. Final seconds of the power play, and it looks. Now Michael Kennedy plays it for the Wildcats. There's McGregor. All he can do is bounce it off the board and played right back in by Oliver Schroeder. So a lot of Hudson Raiders are getting some ice time. Brady Gilbert, the fourth line centers out there, number five for Hudson. Here comes Ryland Schultz. He's a, the other wing on that fourth line. Harry Ross flips it toward the net. Buck bounces in the air. Now taken by Meyer. He'll let a shot go. It's wide. He'll kick. Beats one on three. Polk checked away nicely by the Wildcats. Will be a big challenge in the championship game. Got to get there. Here's Brecken Meyer. He'll flip it up in the air. Poston catches it like a center fielder and hands it over to his defenseman, Ethan Gurney. For Hudson Reese Richardson, he's their third line center. Now, on the stick of Braden Hess, he was looking for Richardson. Davis Drewski playing some of his third and fourth line guys. He knows they got to play back to back games, so he rests the big guns. Mm -hmm. the third pair of defensemen out there as well, Oliver Schroeder and Noah Flatterman, some ice time for the Raiders. Well, here's Hess. There's a shot from Blazer that is stopped. And a penalty coming up. So Anderson, the freshman wing, gets the penalty for charging. Hudson right back in the power play like that. The Raiders turn it the other way. Centering pass. Oh, they were looking for Meyer to get it back from Strappen. Raiders keep buzzing. Meyer shooting. They score again. The work is a junior, but today's not the day, is it? Six nothing. Pepper Ang has not had a save in the third period. He had one in each of the first two periods. Well, no. Starting goaltender didn't have to take a shower after the game, but today might be the day. Net came off again. I don't know if anybody saw it. Well, well they'll just reset it while play continues. Five remaining. 
before Hudson locks up. Big fan of Truman Sirs who didn't dress for this <laughs> yeah, game. I say, I'm looking at my roster. Looking. Boy, and after you school score, we would leave running time. Holston now with 43 saves, and he's certainly been the star of the game. He gave his team a chance, but finally the dam broke when Hudson scored three goals in each of the second and third period. Look at number nine for Hudson. You know what that is? That's Truman Zirsch. Yeah, well, he's listed as an unavailable scratch on the line. I don't know <laughs> why that would have been. <laughs> well, a shot from a tough angle by Blazer trying to flip one in. Oh, there's a rebound that hit a couple sticks, and Braden Hess almost got goal number seven for Hudson. Down to a minute 50. Flat on these things. It'll be the seventh appearance for Hudson tomorrow in the title game. We told you about their title game now for the second year in a row. And the sure. fifth time since 2016. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's okay. Brooks Lockwood got the Davis Dorisky, took over two years ago. But they got her going. Again, yeah, that's a. Do. Pretty good youth program. Talk about Karen By and what she did in women's hockey. She coaches both the boys and the girls in that program. Final minute. And Colson still has some work to do as he top five totals of all time. Then 52 from Garrett Larson of Waukesha North for a point nineteen. His all time record 52 saves in Division One at state. But Colston was good. His team just really didn't have a chance against this very deep and impressive Hudson roster. 